Welcome back to the channel you guys. Today we are doing another refresh around the house and I actually want to go very bold. We are actually doing the powder room and if you've been following for a while, I actually did this like over a year and a half ago. It was the first time I demoed anything. I even did tiling for the first time ever, which honestly was such a big job to tackle because we have only been living here for a couple of months at that point. I was completely new to home DIYs and when I did this room, I actually wanted it to be really dark dark and moody. And guess what? I chickened out. I was honestly really scared to commit to something like that. So instead I went for this beautiful pinky mauve color. I really love the color and it definitely was out of my comfort zone at the time. But now that we've done the house, I just feel so much more confident in my design style. I also realize I'm no longer afraid of painting a room really dark. So that is what we're going to do today. We are going to completely transform it by just making a couple of changes. So let's take a quick look at the before and my plans to change it. So here we are at the powder room. It is right off of our kitchen. So I painted these doors. I absolutely love them. And then inside is our powder room. This is a really small space. We just have a vanity and a toilet. And this vanity I actually painted from what was previously here. Now I use it for cleaning my brushes and things. I still really love this color. I think on camera it's reading a little bit more brown, but in real life it is more of a pink mauve tone. But I feel like I have so much of this white on top and color on the bottom going around especially in the kitchen and the entryway and now in this powder room that it is time to switch it up just a little bit for this transformation i want to paint the beadboard a dark color and then we are going to wallpaper the entire room i have plans to update the artwork this is just something that i found at home goods really quickly because i just needed something here but i think i just want to add something a little bit more personal and if you pan to the left we have my beautiful paper mache arches I I'm still so proud of this project. I'm not quite sure if this is gonna fit into the new makeover, so we shall see. If it doesn't say in here, I will definitely use it somewhere else. There's also this monstrosity that I never fixed. So I think it is time to finally fix that. As for the lighting and the mirror, I think that it's totally fine. It still works in here great. So most likely I will keep these the way that they are unless I find something that will match better, but I like it the way it is still. Okay, you've seen the before. Now it's time to say goodbye because we are going to paint. Okay, now I'm ready to paint. Oh my God, those holes. Actually, I don't need to tape. I had the hardest time trying to choose the perfect paint color for this face. I was debating between these two greens. One's a little bit more blue and one's a little bit more green. Here's a little peek of the wallpaper. I did bring it with me so that I can match the colors together. Ultimately, I put up a poll on Instagram and I let you guys choose the color. So here is the winner. I honestly would have been happy with either one of the colors, but I am glad that we're going with the more blue one because I think it matches with kind of these more blue teal undertones in the wallpaper. Also, if you're wondering why one hand is painted and one hand isn't, it's because I realized I was painting today, so my hands are gonna get really messy, so I'm just gonna finish this one tonight after we paint. I know some of you are going to be sad to see this color go. It definitely was a really beautiful color and I will list it below for you if you're looking for something similar. But with this powder room, I just felt like it was begging it to be painted dark and I just love this new color so much. Although the powder room is small, it's one of my favorite makeovers in the house because it really challenged me to take some big risks when we moved here. It was my first time tiling, installing a toilet, wiring a light, and it was also my first time putting up beadboard so we had a lot of firsts in here. I love experimenting with design and I think life is too short not to make a change if something isn't sparking happiness in you anymore. As a DIYer, I want to challenge myself to grow and learn and I want to be more fearless when it comes to designing my home. Growing up, I would change up my bedroom all the time and I feel like that definitely hasn't changed so I just feel this new spark to just try new things. And I really hope that this makeover just gives you some inspiration to make whatever changes that you want in your home, whether that is big or small. At the end of the day, it is your home and it should make you happy.
I need to show you guys my latest obsession that has been really helping me pass the time as I'm doing all of these DIYs. Because as you guys know, I really love to read, but with juggling YouTube and all the DIY projects and now with Studio Calm, I really have not had time to actually read. But now I started listening to audiobooks by Audible and I'm able to kill two birds with one stone. So I'm DIYing and also reading at the same time, which honestly makes me so happy. I'm currently listening to the Akatar series and I'm currently on the second book now. I downloaded the dramatized adaptation on Audible and I honestly am obsessed. It's just been so much fun and after listening to it, I just cannot get over the ending, which you guys are going to see me react to the ending of the book while I do this project. I've been listening while reading as well and I just feel like that just makes the experience so much more fun. They make it super easy because you can just download it and then listen to it on whatever device anywhere at any time. So I listen to it on my iPad as well as my phone. I basically just turn this on whenever I have some free time. So whether I'm doing a DIY project or sketching or if I have a long drive, this honestly passes the time so much faster. They also have a lot to choose from. So they have bestsellers and new releases and they also have podcasts if that's what you're into. So if you haven't tried out Audible yet and you wanna meet your reading goal this year, definitely check it out. You can get a free trial for 30 days with my link below. Or you could also text the code at tinalay30 to 500 500 and that will also get you a free trial. Thank you again to Audible for sponsoring this video. I'm gonna get back to the project. I just spent the last hour prepping everything and I also went on to Home Renovision DIY's channel just to make sure that I know what I'm doing because this is gonna be my first time using wallpaper using an actual adhesive. Up until this point, I've only used peel and stick wallpaper but today is going to change that because we are going to use an adhesive. I've actually heard that this is even easier so so I'm interested to see how it goes. So whenever I'm doing something new, I like to go on YouTube and watch a few tutorials so that I kind of go into it with some knowledge. I will link the video that I just watched below for you guys. And I wanna show you guys the wallpaper because I showed you guys a little sample, but here she is. Oh my God, it's so cute. I obviously am going for something really moody. So this has a black background and then there's little swans or cranes or something on it. And then cherry blossoms, which you guys know I love. I really wanna incorporate more Asian influences in my home. So I thought this was perfect and it's just such a fun wallpaper. Quality of this is also really nice. It has a little bit of texture going on. So I'm very excited to get it up. And I don't know if you guys can see that, but there are little gold accents on here as well so I think this wallpaper is just so special. The first thing I'm going to do is to level out a straight line and that will be our starting point. Oh um I don't know if I was supposed to do that. Okay here goes nothing. They said to apply a generous amount, so that's what I'm gonna do. I don't know how much is too much though. I'm already sweating and I haven't even put anything up. Oh gosh. I'm so excited for this wallpaper because look at how good it looks. This actually was not too difficult to do. I love that you're able to move it around and adjust pretty easily, especially if you put a lot of glue on there. So that is a huge tip. And if you do get the glue onto the wallpaper or anywhere else, it is water soluble. So you could just take a damp sponge and wipe it all off. So the cleanup is pretty easy as well. Now the trickiest part is just matching up the pattern and then making the joints look as smooth as possible as I go along. After putting up the first panel, I can totally see why people say that this is easier than using peel and stick. The main reason why is because you can actually move this around pretty easily and also since it's thicker I find that you're able to get it really smooth and also I didn't really have any issues with air bubbles. I am totally obsessed with this wallpaper. I think it is gorgeous. I don't know if any of you are like this, but whenever I go to a nice restaurant, I love checking out the bathroom because it's usually really nice and decorated beautifully. So this wallpaper is definitely inspired by all the beautiful moody restaurant bathrooms I've been in, especially at sushi restaurants. They always have the best bathrooms. 
Having a small space like a powder room definitely allows you to do something a little bit more bold. So whenever we have guests over, I know that they love going into this bathroom. Choosing a dark wallpaper like this totally opened up the space and also really heightened it as well. On this episode of Tina Underestimates How Long It Takes to Do Something, I spent three hours, I honestly think it was probably four hours, to do this bathroom. Even though it's a small space, it's so hard to work in because I had to move the ladder a bunch of different times. It was such a tight squeeze in here, but I got it done. I honestly am so glad that I redid this wallpaper because it feels a lot taller in here. This pattern just makes me so happy to look at and it looks so much more expensive and luxe in here. It definitely took a lot of time and effort to do this, but it was so worth it because I am in love. I'm currently on the way to the thrift store. I also am dropping off some packages. So thank you guys for ordering. Fingers crossed that we find some really good stuff today. for a thrift haul. Okay, so I actually had to go to another thrift store because the thrift gods were not with me that day that I went. I found a few cute items so I wanted to share it with you guys. So first we have this vase. I thought it was just so perfect for the springtime. The shape of it reminds me of flowers and tulips. I just really love the shape of this so I had to get it and it was $2.99. Then we have this cute terracotta planter. It was also $2.99. I don't remember if I got these on a discount or not. But look at these cute little handles. I think this would be such a great outdoor planter so maybe I'll use it outside in my backyard or I might just style it inside my house. I don't know where this is gonna go yet but it was just too cute to pass up. Now we have the frames. So this one I think is actually too small for the project that we're working on but I just love the shape of this so much. It has nice rounded edges and also the mat is really cute. It's an oval. There is a really precious embroidered piece in the center here and I think she's actually kind of dressed as a strawberry and she has some like huge slipper clogs on and I think it's so cute. I probably will switch out the art for this frame but I will keep it in case I use it for something else because I just think it's so cute. Here is what I actually got for this project. It is this really big wooden frame. It was the only frame there that I really liked and also had a great price. It was only $7.99 but as you can tell the wood is really worn out here so I'm going to sand it down and see what that will give us. I think I want to keep it wood but depending on how good Good or bad it looks once we sand it down I might actually go in and do some rub and buff on top but we will see when we get there so, oh no! Okay, anyways, that is everything that I got for the thrift store. I'm gonna go ahead and pop this out and then work on the project. box so I have all the pieces here and whenever you're making a box that's going to hang vertically you want to make sure that you are making these parts longer than the horizontal ones that way when you nail to the bottom of this it's harder to drop whereas if this was on top like this it'd be so easy to put something heavy on here and then it would just fall straight down so that is a quick tip that I have for you guys I'm going to use some wood glue and brad nails to put this together I'm not putting anything super heavy on this but if you plan to use this for heavier items make sure that you use screws for the project <laughs>
have our box and we also have our frame, which now looks incredible. I love the wood tone on this. There's so much detail on this and it's gonna look so good in the bathroom. So now we have to put it together and basically this is going to be the cover for it. I'm gonna use some hinges and also a magnetic catch. That way this will stay closed once we have the artwork in there. I added hooks towards the top of the box and when you go to install the screws into the wall, make sure that you're using anchors so that it can carry all of the weight of the cabinet and everything inside it as well. And to ensure that this stays closed, I also added a magnetic catch. Around the inside of the frame, I used these little arms to keep the artwork in place, and I also was able to use the mat that came with the piece. This worked out so perfectly for my Lotus Bloom print that you guys seem to love. We still have them available on Studio Calm, and I just think it complements the power room so well because it's more simple and works really well against the busy wallpaper. Aside from the DIY changes that we made in here, I really didn't add anything else new to the space. I just wanted the paint and the wallpaper to speak for the room compared to what this looked like when we first moved in to when we first made it over. And now to this refresh, I think this is the best version of the powder room. So without further ado, here is the after. I am seriously in love and I'm so glad that I finally made this vision come to life. A year and a half ago, I was way too scared to go moody and now I think I have tackled that fear head on. Let me know your thoughts on this makeover in the comments below and if you guys would go dark and moody in any space in your home. Also, what's really crazy is that I spent under $150 to do this refresh because the wallpaper cost me a little under $100, the paint was under $20, and then my little medicine cabinet it was also under $20 to make as well. So I hope this gives you some good inspiration. And thank you again to Audible for sponsoring today's video. If you guys want to check it out and get your first month for free, make sure to click on my link down in the description box. Don't forget to follow me over on Instagram if you guys want to see updates from me every single day. And that is it for me today. Thank you so much for watching. Stay inspired and I will see you in the next one. Bye!